Historical Contrast The 1987 Toshiba Incident versus the 2025 Nixperia Incident 38 years ago, when the U.S. applied pressure, Japan's Toshiba immediately surrendered, resulting in executives being jailed and a front-page apology printed in major U.S. newspapers. 38 years later, Nexperia, a semiconductor company controlled by Chinese capital, faced joint suppression from the U.S. and the Netherlands, only for the Netherlands to voluntarily send high-level officials to China seeking peace and obediently returning control of the company. Both cases involve technological strangulation by major powers, so why is the outcome so drastically different? This narrative sounds counterintuitive, yet it conceals the most brutal truth about the global technology landscape. First, let's unpack a key fact. The core of both controversies was a struggle for control over chokehold technologies. The precision machinery Toshiba sold was equivalent to equipping Soviet submarines with a silencer, making them invisible to U.S. sonar. The automotive-grade chips produced by Nexperia are the nerve endings of cars. One out of every two automobiles globally uses their products, forcing giants like Volkswagen, BMW, and Tesla to depend on them. Simply put, whoever controls these technologies holds the other side's lifeline. Even more shocking is that the dirty tricks played by the U.S. in the Nexperia incident were ten times harsher than before, specifically creating the 50% look-through rule. This rule designated a company for sanctions even if the Chinese enterprise held only slightly more than 50% controlling equity. However, just one month after the Netherlands froze Nexperia's shares, major corporations like Germany's Bosch and ZF collectively pressured their government. This was because Nexperia's Dingguan factory in China accounts for 70% of its global packaging and testing capacity meaning European-made wafers could not be turned into qualified chips without China. The U.S. intended to checkmate China but ended up checking its own allies. Next, we will thoroughly dissect the complexities of these two events. While they appear to be sacrifices in the struggle between major powers, they actually hide a fundamental shift in the logic of technological competition and clearly show why China was able to move from passively taking blows to Actively breaking the deadlock. Three common threads that debunk the technology has no borders. Myth. Let's first discuss the three unavoidable common points in these two controversies, each of which shatters the myth of technology without borders. The first and foremost is the dark hand of geopolitics, which has always been the backdrop of major power rivalry. During the Toshiba incident, the Cold War was at its peak and the U.S. considered the Soviet Union its arch-rival. When Japan, an ally, aided the enemy, with Toshiba machines secretly selling machine tools to the Soviets, it directly infuriated the U.S. Today, with escalating U.S.-China tech competition, the U.S. uses national security as a pretext to force the Netherlands to control Nexperia. The essence of both is the weaponization of technology to trip up an opponent, the U.S. strategy of Using a borrowed knife to kill has long been perfected. In 2014, they targeted France's Alstom by first arresting executives and then forcing the company to sell its core business to the U.S. firm General Electric. In December 2024, the U.S. listed 136 Chinese entities on the entity list, including Winji Tech Technology, Nexperia's parent company. The so-called rules are merely tools for the U.S. to manipulate its rivals. This was the playbook used against Japan then, and it remains the same against China now. Analysis. Harnessing technology to the chariot of geopolitical conflict always results in a lose-lose scenario. The U.S. defeating Toshiba seemingly won a Cold War chip but caused the global machine tool industry to lose healthy competition. Now, Forcing the Netherlands to control Nexperia has directly led to a global shortage of automotive chips, forcing Volkswagen and Honda to cut or halt production. Technology should be the engine of human progress, but the U.S. uses it as a weapon in a quest for dominance. This hegemonic logic should long have been exposed and resisted globally. The second common point is that both companies controlled chokehold enabling sensitive technologies. How critical were Toshiba's precision machine tools? At the time, Soviet submarines were noisy, and U.S. sonar could detect them thousands of miles away. 
after purchasing Toshiba's machinery, the precision of Soviet propellers soared, and submarine noise was reduced by 90%, causing the U.S. Navy to panic, fearing it could no longer find its opponents. Nexperia is no less crucial, boasting a 40% market share in automotive-grade MOSFETs and 20% in small-signal discrete devices, with over 110 billion units shipped annually. Global mainstream automakers simply cannot function without it. The commonality of these technologies is their dual use, nature. They can be used for manufacturing cars and general industry, but they can also be modified for military applications. The U.S. is most fearful of rivals mastering this type of technology, which is why it severely targeted both Toshiba and Nexperia. Just like the current U.S. restrictions on Huawei's lithography machines, the fundamental fear is that others will surpass it in critical technology and break its monopoly. Analysis The value of technology is never meant for monopoly but for serving industrial development. Toshiba's machinery advanced Soviet submarine technology, and Nexperia's chips support the global automotive industry. These technologies should benefit the world but have become sacrifices in the power struggle. In its attempt to maintain technological hegemony, the U.S. routinely targets foreign companies. Its essence is the fear of losing control over the global supply chain, and this selfish behavior will ultimately compel other nations to accelerate independent innovation. The third common point is that multinational corporations became the sandwich of great power competition. To earn money from the Soviets, Toshiba back then knowingly concealed transactions and violated Kakam export restrictions, which the U.S. eventually exploited. Nexperia is even more wrong. The Chinese firm Wenji Tech Technology conducted a legitimate acquisition and operation, yet the U.S. labeled it a security risk because its control was in Chinese hands. The Netherlands even froze its equity, suspended the Chinese CEO, and transferred the shares to third-party custodians. These companies were labeled as violating rules or having security risks. But the reality is they failed to grasp the rules of great power politics. Toshiba believed the Japanese government would provide a safety net, but under U.S. pressure, Japan acted more ruthlessly than anyone, sending corporate executives to prison. Nexperia also didn't anticipate that the Netherlands, to curry favor with the U.S., would invoke the 1952 Cold War era. Material Supplies Act, an almost never used old law, to control it. Against politics, a company's commercial logic often collapses. Analysis. To succeed in the global market, multinational corporations must be aware of geopolitical currents. But this must not mean becoming sacrifices in the power game. Toshiba's tragedy was mistaking the U.S. for a rule maker, rather than a competitor, while Nexperia's turning point was having China's backing. This reminds all companies that technology can be transnational but the underlying national strength is the greatest source of confidence. Without national support, even the strongest technology can be seized. The fundamental shift from passivity to proactive breakthrough. The essential differences between the two events are far more striking than their similarities. And this is precisely the secret to China's shift from being passive to proactive. The first difference is the nature of the incident. One was corporate violation. The other was Hegemonic plunder. In the Toshiba incident, Toshiba machine did violate Kakam export controls, and a Soviet spy was involved. This was genuine technological smuggling, giving the U.S. a certain, legal, advantage, despite its harsh methods. The Nexperia incident is entirely different. The Chinese enterprise conducted a compliant acquisition and lawful operation, yet the U.S. arbitrarily created the 50% look-through rule and the Netherlands used a Cold War era law to seize control. This was not control but outright plunder. The most ironic part is that when the Dutch Enterprise Chamber ordered the suspension of Nexperia's CEO, it disregarded basic judicial procedures. The US announced its rule, and the Netherlands acted the very next day. It was clearly a premeditated, coordinated operation. This trumped-up charge Maneuver is identical to the U.S. framing of Alstom executives years ago, where rules are merely a fig leaf for exercising hegemony. Analysis The U.S.'s actions have become increasingly ugly, shifting from 
punishing according to the rules. 2. Illegal plunder, which indicates its technological hegemony is loosening. When targeting Toshiba, it could rely on Kakam rules. Now, it can only create arbitrary rules and force allies to act, largely because China's technological progress has alarmed the U.S. This irrational plunder not only undermines international business rules but also exposes the true face of the U.S. to global companies, only pushing more nations to stand against it. The second difference is the response strategy, Japan's, kneeling, versus China's, counterattack, a difference of heaven and earth. After the Toshiba incident, the Japanese government was even more aggressive than the U.S., immediately investigating Toshiba, punishing executives, and forcing the company to pay a fine and run a $1 million, 100 million Japanese yen, full-page, apology advertisement, in over 50 U.S. newspapers, filled with self-criticism. It was also banned from exporting products to the U.S. for three years. In contrast, China's response was a textbook-level countermeasure. China imposed export controls on Nexperia's Chinese subsidiary effectively choking off 70% of its global packaging and testing capacity. Simultaneously, China played its trump card of rare earth controls. The U.S. immediately panicked and quickly eased export restrictions on high-tech products. More aggressively, China did not fight alone. It united with European automakers to exert pressure. After the Netherlands cut off wafer supply, German giants like Bosch and ZF were the first to buckle, bypassing the Netherlands to request export exemptions from China. Under pressure from its own domestic companies, the Netherlands had no choice but to send representatives to China seeking a truce. China's strategy of using a force to deflect another not only protected Nexperia's control but also ignited internal turmoil among U.S. allies, completely breaking the U.S. blockade. Analysis the difference in response strategies is fundamentally a reflection of national strength. Japan, highly dependent on the U.S. economy, could only be slaughtered. China now possesses a complete industrial chain, a massive market, and strategic resources like rare earths, giving it multiple cards to play. By moving from passive apologies to active countermeasures, China has proven that facing hegemony, continuous retreat only leads to further encroachment. Only by possessing strength and daring to draw the sword can one protect one's interests. The third difference is the industrial impact. One was breaking the spine. The other was forcing an upgrade. Following the Toshiba incident, the U.S. utterly crippled the Japanese semiconductor industry. The U.S.-Japan Semiconductor Agreement mandatory required Japan to increase the U.S. market share for semiconductors. Japan's semiconductor industry which once dominated half the global market, has since languished. Conversely, the Nexperia incident did not crush China's semiconductor industry. Instead, it became a catalyst for independent innovation. China's self-sufficiency in mature node chips has steadily increased, and breakthroughs in advanced nodes have also been achieved. Would you like me to find some current analysis or videos discussing the long-term impact of the Nexperia-Wingy Tech incident on global automotive chip supply?